Okay, uh, from a top-down perspective, uh, the Parliament uh, project now multilingual family of uh, Copera, um, uh, um, individual parliamentary Copera across Europe, uh, has always uh, aimed at uh, building uh, comparable uh, and uniformly annotated Copera enriched with uh, speaker and party metadata. However, from a bottom-up perspective, uh, actual compiling uh, individual Copera posed specific challenges, primarily depending on uh, whether the uh, data was taken from already existing Copera or was prepared from scratch. Uh, whether the metadata was available for automatic or manual um, retrieval, and whether the new corpora contained any new phenomena to be encoded. Uh, in uh, what follows, we offer a bottom-up view on uh, the workflow adjustments and uh, definition refinements we saw as required for building one of those corpora to um, fit the specific uh, requirements of the project, and the show, we're showcasing the Ukrainian. Uh, parliament corpus. Um, the Parliament um, UA uh, corpus was uh, in fact built from scratch for the project as the first uh, specialized full uh, text uh, uh, corpus of Ukrainian parliamentary proceedings. Unlike others, um, such as the Czech Parliament, um, uh, Ukrainian official sources do not preserve uh, historical metadata very well. Moreover, uh, access to some uh, previously uh, freely available uh, open data portals um, or websites was not authorized between early 2022 and mid-2023 because of Russia's cyber attacks and for overall considerations of security. Uh, alternative sources had to be used and to get the required personal and organizational metadata. Um, since our sources were various, uh, came from um, you know, various places, and were diverse, uh, we developed a workflow to integrate uh, automatic and manual uh, collection of the, um, yeah, of the data as well as adding of the metadata um, on the speakers, organizations and events uh, involved. Since uh, we had only two corpus builders on board, uh, a computer specialist um, uh, without any um, Ukrainian language skills or knowledge of the social political situation uh, in Ukraine, and a language and political discourse uh, expert without any uh, knowledge of programming, um, it was important to separate between the um, automatic and manual processes as much as possible for the sake of speed and uh, labor efficiency and at the same time to collaborate for the sake of reducing errors in the corpus metadata. Uh, the letter was done via the dedicated Google sheet uh, that uh, reported bugs uh, with a uh, conditional formatting. So our workflow included uh, 11 uh, major steps, both single and re uh, repetitive, as uh, shown in the figure on the screen. Uh, during the initial stage, plenary um, transcripts, uh, lists of parliamentary speeches containing uh, timestamps and uh, personal metadata on MPs, including their full names, dates of birth, uh, gender and affiliations within the, uh, um, uh, the government, um, within the parliament, sorry, uh, were automatically um, downloaded in the HTML, XML and uh, CSV formats from the RADA, from the Verkhovna RADA, the Ukrainian parliament. Parliament Open um, Data Portal. Uh, the then, um, uh, the um, metadata on government members, uh, guest speakers, um, uh, organizations and events uh, like the periods in, uh, of government in office as well as additional metadata and MPs like person renaming due to marriage or uh, divorce uh, mostly, uh, were collected manually from open sources and organized as a spreadsheet with um, uh, the following features, conditioning formatting for more accessible validation of the file data, uh, automatic, uh, automatic generation of IDs, and using the publish uh, to the web uh, Google Sheet function um, the feature uh, to the, um, so that the tables could be downloaded um, in the uh, TSV file format with the script. 
Um, in the meantime, the textual part of the uh, format was produced and um, HTML proceedings were converted to the parliamentary format by segmenting input into utterances and uh, paragraphs, uh, uh, categorizing uh, um, paragraphs by language, uh, Ukrainian or Russian, with actually Ukrainian uh, making um, about 99% of all the utterances and Russian only about 1%. Uh, and uh, annotating uh, non-speech um, content uh, such as uh, interruptions and notes. Uh, in the next step, uh, we reused the um, tool originally developed for the uh, PAR Czech project for uh, parla um, parliamentary Czech corpus uh, to annotate Ukrainian files morphologically and syntactically uh, according to the uh, universal dependencies uh, formalism. Um, then uh, named entities were recognized and um, the results were stored under the TA um, label. Uh, the TN uh, files, along with the uh, lists of speeches and the uh, speaker and party metadata, were utilized for the uh, automatic linking between uh, speakers and persons, because the original data did not contain um, unique personal identifications. Um, then, this uh, linking, um, when this linking failed, then uh, the TNA files were used to automatically detect uh, mentions of the miss or multi-matching uh, speakers in the transcripts in the preceding utterances normally uh, commonly um, produced by um, uh, chairpersons. Uh, in fact, uh, um, detecting mentions was an important step, uh, helping to get full names of speakers, especially it was true about guest speakers, uh, who were not on record elsewhere, and uh, as well as to uh, disambiguate between the speakers with uh, homonymous names in the transcripts. Uh, the retrieved lists of miss or multi-man uh, matching uh, speakers were then aligned with the uh, manually uh, collected metadata in the uh, spreadsheet. Um, the uh, remaining uh, multi-matching speakers were linked manually before the Ukrainian uh, parliament uh, corpus was finalized. Um, keeping the uh, speaker speech links apart and merging them at the uh, end of the pipeline made it possible to fix any bugs related to those links without uh, reprocessing part of the whole of the corpus again. Um, the uh, corpus um, finalization uh, wound up all the other processes, uh, like setting header information in uh, every T file, um, affiliating persons' IDs to utterances, and um, um, calculating volumes of elements, words, and sentences, uh, and speeches. Uh, the other uh, issue that we had to face uh, was as follows: um, a T schema of uh, for. Uh, Corpora for parliamentary proceedings provides um, explanations of uh, metadata categories in the example documentation. However, we realized that some T schema terms uh, need to be further defined due to the variation of the underlying phenomena in the Verkhovna Rada uh, with respect to the scope of notions that they uh, can refer to and the circle of reference out in the real world uh, related to, in order to be applied consistently across the corpus. To do so, we revisited the classical semiotic triangle by Ogden and Richards and uh, it, because it conveniently um, illustrates the indirect um, um, relation uh, between the um, uh, um, uh, between the um, um, so uh, the term, um, the linguistic symbol in our case, uh, the term, uh, and the um, uh, referent uh, in our case, the object it represents or 
an MP or a term or um, a party, for instance, uh, which uh, this indirect relation has to be mediated via the thought or reference or, in our case, a statement of meaning uh, with respect to the following terms. Uh, uh, a parliamentary term or, or a period, uh, leg legislative period, also known as a convocation in uh, the Ukrainian terminology, um, 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 is the period between the day of uh, the first uh, uh, sitting of the current term and the day of uh, the first uh, sitting of the next term. Uh, to avoid overlapping, we took the day prior to the opening of the next session as the last day of the previous term. Um, uh, another example would include opposition. Uh, overall, to distinguish between the coalition and the opposition in the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine, it was not enough to take into account only uh, participation of particular parliamentary groups in the formation of the government, but also um, uh, we considered a parliamentary group uh, announcements uh, made in the, during uh, plenary sessions as well uh, as belonging to the opposition or, co or coalition, as well as their voting patterns for key laws or key appointments. Um, another uh, example would be uh, acting uh, minister. Uh, an acting minister is a newly added label for the um, affiliation role grouped along with ministers and deputy ministers. Uh, it is used in the parliament corpus for government officials who were appointed um, to serve in the role of a minister or in, on an interim basis, but not uh, hold the respective office. We're not aware of the usage of this uh, extended affiliation role by any other uh, corpora within the parliament project. Uh, chairperson uh, quite clearly included uh, uh, people presiding and elected people uh, to preside during sessions, but also their deputy, their deputies, first deputies and deputies, as well as uh, the um, um, chairpersons on, of the uh, uh, preparatory parliamentary groups prior to the election of the actual um, uh, chairperson. Um, uh, regular speakers was another uh, somewhat intricate uh, category because uh, it included both uh, MPs uh, who uh, do not preside as chairpersons or uh, as well as uh, members of the cabinet of ministers, uh, ministers uh, as well as deputy ministers, neither of whom are uh, MPs in the, uh, um, uh, according to Ukrainian laws. Uh, the guest category included everybody else, all the other speakers who did not fall either into the first category or into the second, uh, where, where uh, the current and the former presidents ended up along with uh, um, representatives of um, uh, central and local governments and foreign guests. Um, and uh, to conclude, uh, I need to say that uh, the workflow developed to integrate uh, automatic and manual metadata collection and uh, inclusion into the parliament corpus enhanced the process of linking speakers and persons as well as the finalization of the corpus. We also argued that uh, fi uh, refining definitions of names for um, some key metadata categories based on the local legislation and practices is a step toward even greater comparability of uh, the comparability of the uh, um, parliament corpora, um, as it will allow researchers from different fields to better uh, differentiate between variation in the transcripts and variation in the parliamentary systems involved. And, um, Last but not least, uh, the major lessons learned uh, in, in the course of this experience are as follows. Collaboration between experts in computer science and the, in the humanities is uh, challenging yet rewarding. Uh, uh, efficient planning and uh, uh, sustainable data processing are essential and delivering a parliament corpus takes uh, a significant amount of uh, motivation and determination and it's ultimately a labor of love but it's absolutely worth it thank you for your attention here are our references and acknowledgements
Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a very timely presentation, very interesting presentation. Um, we have, uh, once again, very nice, uh, a couple of minutes for questions, please. Hi, I wanted to ask about the data set and the languages. You said one percent was Russian, 99 was Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. um, is Surge classified into Ukrainian, Russian, or simply as colloquial? It is not present in the parliamentary discussion here. Yes, thank you very much for this question. Uh, we developed an algorithm according to which uh, we would automatically, or it was automatically recognized or Ukrainian as Ukrainian or Russian and not Surzhik, because objectively Surzhik is a mix. Um, uh, because uh, it was uh, done at the level of paragraphs, uh, we talked about the majority, the prevailing language based on the criteria that we agreed upon as for automatic identification. And we, um, on top of uh, the already existing tools, we, we like developed a, a separate algorithm that was based on the frequencies, um, expected frequencies for characters, which are typical either only exclusive for Ukrainian or exclusive for, for, for Russian. The problem with Surzhik is that sometimes it's, it cannot be um, um, certainly identified based on records only because of the homonymy between the languages. And uh, because we worked only with the written transcripts and not audio files, uh, there is simply no way to uh, say with a high degree of certainty whether this word was pronounced more in Russian or in Ukrainian because a percentage of homonymy definitely exists. So because we worked with the written data, we didn't take Surzhik as a category. And oh, frankly, um, uh, there were some interesting cases where uh, I wouldn't qualify it as Surzhik because it, it is a, obviously a very social category. It's very... Um, uh, vague uh, overall and it depends on how you term it because it comes in different forms. Uh, do you talk about it on all linguistic levels? Do you talk about it only in relation to phonology mostly or morphology or uh, all of the above would be the salience there, what can be a bad Ukrainian versus a, a balanced mix. Uh, so there are many questions to ask. But in this case, um, uh, there were cases where uh, short utterances were spoken like at the level of one sentence consisting of say three, five words. And one of the words was clearly said, pronounced in Russian as opposed to others could, that could be uh, in Ukrainian and could be homonymous. That was considered as Russian, although when I, I did find some, trans, uh, some audio files actually and listened to it, no, it was pronounced in a Russian way. But uh, the question is here whether it was a Surzhik at that time or it was actually a reference to the voters from the east where a little bit was inserted. So many more criteria need to be included to uh, introduce Surzhik as a third category, but I would claim that it's next to impossible to do it in a, a, any meaningful way without the audio files as well included. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Uh, some more questions? Uh, on the slide, on the one of the last uh, 22, you um, uh, said something mysterious, challenges in cooperation between humanities and, and uh, computers. Could you elaborate a little bit yeah. or just share some <laughs> yeah. secrets? <laughs> yeah, well, the, uh, the major challenge at, at, at first was that, uh, indeed, like I said, uh, um, the program doesn't read Cyrillic, uh, the linguist doesn't read code, so doesn't follow code. So uh, 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 defining each other's competences and uh, finding a way in which we could produce uh, the um, corpus in a rather uh, prompt way because uh, the Ukrainian corpus was not planned originally. We were very fortunate to be included into the family uh, well after the project got started. And we, but we needed to keep up with the rest of the project and actually we were not the last to complete it. Uh, which, uh, at which point, given uh, only two t people on board, uh, was entirely different but complementary in the end competencies and a very strict time frame uh, required a very quick learning on each other's side. 
we won't say who learned more of Ukrainian and who learned of more of programming at this point, but we found a happy medium in the form of Google Sheets where we, uh, with conditional formatting, it was actually key to communication, but otherwise we separated these two processes. So establishing probably the workflow, that's why we emphasized that so much we're kind of pleased to share it with others because even under these specific conditions, uh, you can deliver, you can deliver a corpus uh, once you understand the realm of the other uh, field, no matter how many people are involved there, and you organize your work in a way that you don't get it in each other's way, but you actually support and report bugs and uh, you can do things in parallel. So the learning how to do it was probably the biggest challenge because um, of the lack of experience before but it's absolutely doable and possible.